everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 60 minute session with a client today and I'm really happy to have you as a part of this experience with us. Um, this is actually the third session that I've done with this client. So I'll put links to previous sessions in the description if you're interested in checking it out, um, checking out the other sessions. I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals out loud here and get started. Okay. There's just a lot of energy you're expressing. And I've read your goals several times and I keep getting jammed up in my throat, which tells me we're gonna be working on your throat chakra, but we're gonna keep it open, okay? Um, I'm gonna try and read these goals out loud. <laughs> you guys don't know this, but I've made this introduction many times and I keep it keeps getting lodged in my throat. Okay, I'm gonna do it this time, swear to God. All right. I want to continue the work of identifying and releasing blockages in my chakras and energy body that are keeping me from being able to directly connect with my highest self, my spirit guides, etc. I am determined to face, embrace, and heal myself and release any and all parts of myself that are holding me back from being all that I can possibly be. I would like to know more about the medieval Celtic lifetime that you spoke of in our first session. What happened there that broke my soul? Also, I'd like to know what you see when you look at the kundalini coiled at the base of my spine. What is keeping it from rising up through all my chakras? You know what's interesting? I'm wearing a dress that has like a snakeskin print and I'm going to be looking at kundalini energy today. I wasn't even, I didn't even know. I just, I just felt inspired to wear this and now there's connections going on all over the place. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to relax now and get tuned in and make sure I don't have any random distractions here. Okay. I'm just getting tuned into your energy. And I'm communicating with the universe, your goals, just really looking at your goals. But the way that it feels energetically when you express these goals. And I'm talking about this experience in my throat. I'm talking about the kundalini coil that's spine. I'm talking about that past life. I'm talking about what can we do to heal any fragmented parts of your soul? What can we do to heal all your chakras to help them work together more with more of a fluid flow. I feel like there's just so much we're going to be looking at today, but there's just so much we can look at today. So it's so right now I'm just kind of preparing myself for all of that. It's like um, you have a lot of things on the task list and how are you going to get it all done today and what can I get done and what can I get done, you know? So I've got this kind of like, there's all this stuff. Okay, what, what do we need to work on first? <laughs> and it's not based on your goals. It's based on your energy field. So there's a lot going on, okay? <laughs> and you're really open to healing a lot of things and I could feel that. So my human self is expressing my challenges, but also the heart of what we want to achieve here. There's a very practical man energetically, and he's talking about um, my relationship with the throat energy your throat energy and how it was affecting me and why not start with something simple and that we could start there and then allow it all to kind of reveal more and more and more and more. So I'm going to go directly into your throat chakra, okay? It's completely just shrouded. It's what it's like. It's 
it's like walking into a space that could potentially be like a museum or an attic full of artifacts and it's all covered in black sheets and it's dark there's no light that's streaming in here so i'm kind of like this curious child just looking around and it's all shrouded and it's shrouded vibrationally too so And this isn't saying that you aren't somebody who can express yourself, but it's saying that where you have a vulnerability in your throat chakra, it's really vulnerable and it looks like this. There's so much more you could be expressing. So much more. And um, it's gonna, it looks a little bit gross, okay? And it's making me feel really, really uncomfortable, like uh, fidgety and um, like uh, just like um, really, really uncomfortable. And the image itself is uh, once the black shrouds um, come off, it looks like like uh, like water balloons, but just full of pus and they're squishy. And there's lots and lots and lots. It's like grapes on a vine. But there's these squishy pus-filled balloons and it's all throughout here. And I will tell you, the discomfort is just really off the charts. <sighs> so I'm just, we're just going to have to be uncomfortable for a little bit because we really need to sit in this energy. Not just me, but you too. So we're both going to feel it, okay? And there's a lot of upset, there's a lot of whys, there's a lot of crying in here. A lot of um, internalizing your experience. And by internalizing your experience, you're experiencing now torture. Literally. This is painful. This is really painful. Okay. I'm just looking at now that we're able to see it for what it is, the initial shock and reaction of the energies is sort of flown through. Now we can kind of look at it with a little bit more balance, okay? I am perplexed as I look at this because it's not something I can just let's just haul it on out of here no it's not like that we have to deeply understand all the there's a lot of deep-rooted meaning to what has developed this and those deep roots deserve time and attention and nurture we don't want to just get the old um, knife out and cut this out you know and then we'll just sew it up and throw that out and we're done no <laughs> we're not doing that it's like your energy field has its own psychology and that is extremely essential to the balance here with what you have going on with your throat. It's almost like you took aspects of your sacral chakra and put it here in your throat. That's, that's Now that I say that, it's really freaking me out here. It's really a lot of discomfort and pain. That's why when I go to your sacral chakra, it's like, doesn't want to talk about it. <clears throat> doesn't want to talk about it. So it's to be really, really delicate. But by going into your throat, I'm able to reach your sacral chakra. And the torture, mutilation, and memories are in your throat. Okay? So... <laughs> Now we're also talking about kundalini energy coiled up at the base of the spine. How do we get that to flow through all your chakras? Well, what do you do when you have all this trauma from your sacral chakra inside your throat chakra? You see what I'm, I'm talking about here? It's so exciting for me because we're discovering stuff. We're learning things. It's crazy when you see, so all the chakras are all working together in different ways. You can move chakra consciousness and chakra energy into the heart to center 
at all your chakras and to, to get them to really work together with love, you can do that. Um, so you chakras can move around. They can move their energy around, but they're always in the same places. So your third eye is always going to be in your third eye, but part of its consciousness can be in the heart or could be in your sacral chakra. So you have a part of the spirit of your sacral chakra in your throat big time. And it's a lot of pain and suffering going on in there. It's disturbing. It's uh, it's it's on the disturbing level of, and this is the image that comes to me, a concentration camp where you're taking victims, people chosen for disturbing scientific surgeries. And now one child is um, sewn to another child and their arms are removed and now they're sewn together. It's freaking so messed up and disturbing. That is the balance of your throat chakra here. That also includes, it's not, is it your throat or is it your sacral chakra or is it both? They're like sewn together in a very disturbing way. It's, it's mortifying. It's absolutely mortifying, okay? You're doing a really good job. You're so ready to face this stuff. And I mean, I'm emphasizing that is literally the image that keeps echoing to me about the extreme balance going on here in your throat. It's like two souls sewn together, the throat and the soul, sacral chakra. I mean, the more I talk about it, it's like seeping in and you're registering and you're just, you're kind of in a bit of a shock, but you're not saying that you don't disagree kind of thing. You're just like kind of in a shock. So me just repeating this over and over and over again is giving you time to just really soak it in and come to um, an ability to look at this in a new way now, okay? Now that we're talking about your catching up, you're getting up to speed, so the shock effects starting to wear off, and now you're, you and I are working together. We're like in this hidden attic space in your throat. Now we see this disturbing, sewn together spirits of your two chakras. Now you're directing your attention down to your sacral chakra, and it just looks like a big hole. It looks like somebody just cut you open and ripped you out and didn't put anything back. And now um, images of the terrible things done to animals is coming to me. But we can do that to animals because they're animals, right? So that's echoing to me about injustice. Injustice. And that women... I mean, this is saying women. This isn't talking about men, although it happens to all genders, okay? But this is really amplifying the word women. Injustice, um, torture done to women, okay? Because they're women. So, so rape is often a man taking advantage of a woman. It can go both ways, right? It can definitely go both ways. But there's something about this in the history of the human race that rape is oftentimes man takes advantage of woman. But there's something about, it's not necessarily about rape, it's about women and the, the ways that women can be taken advantage of. And it has to do with surgical, a surgical approach has to do with mutilating genitalia. It has to do with specifically reproductive organs, removal of uterus. It has to do with extreme surgeries on reproductive. And not just that, it's, it's touching reproductive organs in the wrong way, in not, a not non-sacred and, and loving kind way. It's, it's like a total mutilation it's just, and, and it's wrong. It's extremely wrong. And it keeps pairing alongside an animal. And the animal is silent because it doesn't speak human, okay? It speaks animal. 
and it speaks in its own animal language. But human, but you are human, okay? You speak human, but you speak for some reason like an animal. You don't speak like a human, you speak like an animal. And so you aren't taken seriously. Because animals too, we can just do whatever we want to them because they're not um, the dominant race. And there's something when I say that, that echoes about men um, as a dominant race. And women are just animals that could be used however. We're like cattle, we're like um, pigs, we're like just, can be just used. You have passion in your heart about animals and women and and it's not, this is not on the level of, because there's extremists out there. And I know I get really sensitive about, about trying, you know, because every every story has a side men are going through challenges too women are going through challenges too we're all going through challenges right but what you've been through and the way that you're speaking energetically it's being expressed like this it's very natural and i'm not going to judge it and nobody else is going to judge it either because it's appropriate with what you've been through and the way your energy field is expressing this information <sighs> This is, there's more to it than this. I mean, there's more to it than this. I'm starting to see another lifetime here. And it's like a sex trade type lifetime. But it's like with farm animals and you're, you're the woman and then farm animals for people to just watch, pay money and watch you. But you're a slave, you're a slave. That is so degrading. That was really, really degrading. You're finding the courage to speak. Just so you know, you're going to find yourself becoming more able to speak. This session is opening up, okay? Opening you up in a very healthy and nurturing way. That is a lifetime. That was a degrading lifetime. It was a degrading lifetime, but interestingly enough, you, you, there's something about you and understanding animals and you're forced into sexual experiences with animals and people coming in to pay to see and you're a slave, but it was very degrading, but you somehow, it's almost like the animals were your friends and they were people and you talked to them about your feelings you talked to them about what was right or what was wrong and you could speak to the animals but the humans no no because the humans saw you as an animal too and you spoke animal language you didn't speak human language but it's you didn't speak male you didn't speak men Gosh, I'm telling you, your sacral chakra, but it's not just sacral chakra. It's your etheric, like, reproductive area, also intertwined with the physical. There's so many layers to it, squishing out lots of blood right now, okay? <sighs> Screaming. really really painful okay really 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 painful your heart it's really helping to loosen up your heart a bit it's get really a bit dizzy here in the mind because we're accessing so much all of a sudden so it's a little bit dizzy in the mind i don't want to talk about getting your kundalini energy activated we got to clear this stuff out right <laughs> Your throat's um, definitely being used. So I will say what I've accomplished thus far is already 
quite exhausting <laughs> because so much is being expressed. So let's just give you a minute here to kind of collect and catch up with all these emotions. Okay. Um, we're going to go back to your, it's your uterus. It's your reproductive organs on the inside. And you're giving birth to your uterus. It's so, there's so much blood just constantly gushing out here. Gushing out, gushing out, gushing out, gushing out. And what's interesting is that lifetime with the animals and the, the sexual slave you you found a way to work through the life because of the friendships you developed with the animals, okay? You found a way to cope with it because of that, okay? And the spirits of these animals are with you right now, um, supporting you through this healing process because so much degraded grading energy has been done in your life today it's really really hard <laughs> there's still a lot there's still a lot but you are, there is particularly a donkey or a horse. It kind of hard to tell. Maybe it's both. But it seems like farm animals, barnyard animals. And I will say it's very uncomfortable still. Your whole reproductive space is very uncomfortable. So me moving around is you moving around because you're uncomfortable and so we're just gonna we're continuing to clear out this but they're here for you almost like holding your hand through this whole process they're animal spirits and they're spirits that love you very 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 much and there's something about your you speaking animal language that it's much more um, therapeutic for you to have the animals here than for you to have the people, the humans here. So I'm, I'm giving you ability to just be what, who you need to be and to speak animal language and to um, be aware that your animal friends are here. That also is part of this because I, you're, there was so much, I mean, it was like a show every single night kind of thing that there was, this was on the energy side of things, this created a lot of mass, I don't know how to explain it, but you have a lot of intertwined animals, spirits in your so like you'll see soulmates and they'll intertwine together kind of like a candy cane <laughs> and there's a lots of different barnyard animals intertwined and i'm supposed to release the those animals from your candy cane because it's something about being human and the relationships developed with the animals and the shows, the sex shows that you are participating in and all that. It was really, um, it created an imbalance when it comes to sexual expression, major imbalance, major, major. So it's kind of like when you find your soulmate and it's just not working out and you go both you go your separate ways, but you can't stop thinking about them. Five years later, you're still thinking about them. That's because you've got a candy cane thing going on with their soul. So you got to take out the red stripe or the white stripe and give that energy back. So I had to take out the stripes of the different animals to give the energy back to each animal so you can just be a human because you have to be a human now. And your time with the animals is shifting 
because you've lived lifetimes as animals, lots of lifetimes as animals, and you really just did not get on along with the being human. Like, because human beings have a, a certain way of functioning, we're an animal too, but you didn't like being a human animal. You did not like being a human animal at all. <laughs> And you prefer to be actual animals, much rather be actual animals. But your guides and everybody, your higher self, everybody is saying all the the animal lives are, there's going to be um, a shift in that. And you're going to, it's almost like lots of support to help you come to peace with being human. Because that is a huge soul lesson for you, is to learn how to be at peace with being human because there's a massive tug of war between you and just this human way you just it's repulsive like because of all the experiences you've had and the way the human beings treat each other and, and the animals don't treat each other like that there's just it's so degrading to be human like we de are degrading of each other animals aren't degrading of you and they don't degrade each other like, it's a different experience. <sighs> okay. Um, you're, you keep saying that there's another surgery that we're going to have to do. And I say that we're done with surgeries. And I show you a really sharp needle and I then I make it disappear. And I say, this is, this is like, you know, I feel like saying this really quick. There's a phenomenon where people do psychic surgery, okay? Where they use an actual energy needle and sew and cut and do things to your etheric body, okay? I have found that this is um, just as torturous to do this in the energy side of things as it is to do this in the physical side of things. Whenever you're cutting the body, whether on the energy world or the physical world, you're cutting, okay? And there's pain, there's ripping involved in it. So um, to really truly heal energy, you, you just shift it, you mold it, you transform it like clay. And to do it, you have to get into the psychology of the energetic fabric itself. So, and then you have to help the energy consciousness because there's so many parts of consciousness that a single human and body have um self-realize once the energy self-realizes it changes shape and it and it rebalances itself naturally so so i'm so i'm talking to you about it. there's no surgery there's none of that going on here we're doing like psychology <laughs> But it's extremely powerful on the energy side of things. <sighs> because it's us embracing the memories. It's us embracing the pain. It's us working through understanding it as humans together. It's us not judging the situation. Because the imbalances are coming from, have coming from so many emotions. And the way things felt and the pain involved. That's what creates these ex extreme um, variations in balance. You really you keep um, demanding I sew you up, I stitch you up. You keep like screaming it at me. You're, you're, you're freaking out, basically. You're hyperventilating. You're, it's almost like you're to such an extreme you're going to pass out. But I can't, I can't do anything. Like, I am standing here just generating love. You're reacting. I can only allow you to continue to get this out of your system. It's because you've been told so many times that there's a surgery that we can do to fix this. There's a surgery we can do to fix that. And so you went, are, are, I kind of created a pattern in your energy field that um, the pain that you're going through and releasing all these memories and reconciling this stuff, it's a lot of emotional pain. It's a lot of reliving of the memories, okay? It's hard stuff. 
whether it's on the energy side of things or the physical side of things, it's hard to have emotions, especially really painful, sad ones. So you keep just wanting me to sit you up so all this pain will go away because you've been told so many times that this surgery would fix it or just this would fix it or this would. And it has to do with a surgical procedure. It's very loud in here. It's very like hyperventilating type energy. And all I can do is just stand grounded, very neutral, and continue to send love and support and continue to send you the energy to show you that there's another way. I'm encouraging you to relax and explore a different way with me. And I show you that your animal friends are all here and that we don't agree with sewing up human body parts. We don't agree with stitching the sacral chakra to the throat. It's disturbing. <sighs> very exhausting right now, but you are shifting. You're shifting your energy big time. Very, very exhausting right now. Almost there. Yeah, you're you're gonna fall asleep. So you're you're already starting to fall asleep. Like I'm talking snoring, crashed out, it's gonna sleep for two straight weeks. <laughs> I'm just gonna let you sleep. You're you're kind of um it's like a blanket is developing and it's a black black um it's like a thin black blanket, like a sheet is being placed over you and I feel drawn to go back to the throat for a bit. The animals are all still with you. Okay, this is a, there is a lot um, of movement going on here in your throat. A lot of movement. I can feel movement too in the solar plexus, the heart as well. I mean, this is a lot of energy work today, okay? So, and you're you're open. So the delicate the delicate approach is um, disappearing because you're saying I'm ready now. <laughs> Something having to do with male and then female. Something having to do with male energy. So the throat, again, it's covered in like black sheets. Um, it's covering up those like squishy pus filled balls on a vine throughout your throat. There's some kind of male energy here that's kind of hidden in the shadows. He's not a knight. He's he's not. He's got some very um, a disturbing approach to the way that he does things. Very like men you've seen before in other lives. He does not care about what you go through. He doesn't care. This could even be a doctor that you've come across before. And that part, that part of his soul is here in your throat chakra with your sacral chakra. You see, it's, um, he's lodged in your throat, so hit, what he means to you was hard to swallow, okay? You hate his fucking guts. I mean, you're cussing now. You're, you're lethal. You're deadly. You will teach him a lesson, okay? 
you're, you're a snake. You're a poisonous snake and you will not just bite him one time. You will bite him over and over and over again and you're going to create a space where he'll be bitten over and over again for all eternity and be poisoned to death over and over and over again for all eternity. And you're also going to strangle him and choke him and suffocate him for all eternity. That's how mad you are at him. He deserves to be in pain. This is good because you're venting out. You have not allowed your, you have not vented this out properly. Okay. That's why it's so extreme, but this is anger. This is anger. The thing about anger, it, it usually it's really loud at first and then it gets pretty exhausted fast. But yeah, you're still angry about it. You're still, you're biting him in like an infinite time space over and over again. And you're really allowing him to feel the poison is slowly killing him. You're also not allowing him to get enough air to breathe. And you're just biting him, biting him. Like you just constantly like um, stabbing him with your teeth, your sharp teeth over and over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, you're getting like, you're gonna, his eyeballs, his tongue, his face, his, um. okay, this is, sorry, this, you've almost got it all out, okay? You're now, you're doing something else. You're taking, because he did something to you, and you, you kind of, um, you have a part of his soul stuck in your throat, okay? And he's in your world now, is the way this is going. You're turning him into a woman, and you're forcing and now you are playing his role and you are doing to to him what he did to you and he's the woman now you're the man and you're going to make sure he feels it i mean this is you venting your anger i can't tell you to, to not do this i can't tell you because this is oh, so many years of unreconciled suffering and hurt to from somebody you 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 have to get it out you i mean every time i think you're almost there something changes and it does feel like you're almost there you haven't quite awoken yet to Choosing to not stoop to his level kind of thing. You don't, you don't relate to there being a level. You just simply want him to know what it feels like. So he'll think twice before he does this ever again to anybody else. And how hurt it creates. That suffering it creates for souls when he does this. It creates so much suffering. He needs to know what that suffering is, what that feels like. So he'll think twice to do that to anybody else ever again. I will say his soul is not very nice. I mean, even still after everything you've done to him, he... It's almost like he will make sure that you you don't ever do this to him again. So he's kind of, it's creating um, a ping pong table where you teach him the lesson, right? That he's supposed to learn. Well, what if he doesn't choose to learn the lesson that you want him to learn? 
So what he learns from it is not what you expect. And now he comes back tenfold in the next life to teach you this lesson to never mess with him again. That he'll always be a master in comparison to your patheticness. Like he's getting angrier and angrier and angrier. And he's getting all these ideas of all the things that he's going to do to you. So now you see how we create this like karmic band um, that just goes on and on and on forever when really we just need to say, you know what? I had the experience. I learned some amazing things. I was in ridiculously hard. But I, I do not, I don't need any, I'm complete. And if you're still struggling to feel a completion with that, say hi yourself. I don't want to hold any on to any more of this and I welcome you to show me ways that I can learn how to let go. That I learn how to forgive him and forgive myself. That I can just learn forgiveness and how to let go and move on because I don't want to carry this in my suitcase for lifetimes upon lifetimes upon lifetimes. He's not worth it. <laughs> So we're re reversing time and now you're in your throat and we're together in the attic and you're seeing him. He looks, uh, he doesn't have many teeth. He looks shriveled up. He's really feels comfortable with dark being shrouded in um, a shadow. It, so he has a shadow as part of his um, aura, you could say. That's his comfort zone. And by having that as his comfort zone, it gives him permission to make certain types of choices and not care how it affects others. Okay? He still does um, get to you a bit, just seeing his face. And you should actually take some time, um, because this, again, it takes time to heal. It just doesn't go away. Like, you, you got, it's a psychology. It takes time to, to adjust, to heal, to vent these feelings, you know? To take a look at the different faces that you've come across in your life, um, where what they provided you in your memories of how they treated you with love and respect or completely and utterly degraded you, right? You just need to look at those faces. You just go through the slideshow. This is the face of that man. This is the face of that um, person. You know, this is the face of that person. And that person made me feel like this. That person did this to me. And see their face in your mind, okay? And kind of go into the memory and re kind of feel again what took place. And just sit in the feeling of it. But work on unconditional love, okay? You say that you're he mutilated you you will never be the same because of what he did to you he destroyed you this is very exhausting i say but look at how he's he's teaching you many things and you're growing and expanding and becoming very strong and now you're expressing yourself And we can't go back in time to undo or un, you know, not visit that guy ever again. We can't go back in time. We so the, one, once the event happens, we can heal what took place. Okay, we can understand it through different perspectives, and then find a way to work on coming to peace with it. 
And sometimes that takes some forgiveness too, unconditional love towards him as well as yourself. Your reproductive region is achy. I mean, it aches a lot. These uh, pus ball balls are so getting smaller, okay? And I say make your life your own life. Make it your own life. <sighs> Not make it your own life plus a memory of this guy. You have your time to heal the emotions associated with the certain memories, right? From different people. But that's there that's that time for you to heal over there, okay? But you can make it your own life. And you can grow a garden here in your throat, grow a garden in your sacral chakra, you can grow a garden, you know, we can bring in Mother Mary energy. You can bring in angelic energy. You can um you can transform your energy field. You can make it your own. Not make it your own plus all the things that happen to you. We're going to heal all those things, right? And then continue to allow all what you're making your own to blossom. You are such a strong person. I mean, he he's already fading out, okay? So that stripe in your candy cane is fading out. And you are forgiving him. And the further he fades out, the more liberated you feel. Like, why was I wasting my time? Like, why was I even wait? Like, that's kind of, it's almost, I don't want to say laughable, but the energy has shifted so much so fast. It's almost like delirious, like... What was I doing? Like, biting that man? Strangle? Like, I needed to do that, but... Like, I really just needed to learn how to forgive it and just let it all go. Because, man, I feel great now. So, you're feeling, like, almost hysterically great, okay? By letting that guy go. <sighs> Huge improvement here. Alright, let's go back to the you that had fallen asleep. And... Your throat's even expanding. There's more room in here. These pus bubbles are getting really small. It almost feels like we can open things up in here now. Um, sacral chakra isn't feel stitched up. It doesn't feel disturbing. It feels like it's it's time now to move that energy that got lodged here back where it goes. Okay. Uh, let's see what you're doing in here with the animals and resting and... You feel like he he cut out you. He cut you out of yourself. He actually removed you from yourself. That doctor did. He actually cut you out of yourself. You keep showing me it like this. He removed you from yourself. I mean, you're really saying it like this. This you that was falling had fallen asleep and the animals is supporting you through this and you were bleeding and you needed me to, to sew you up again or do a surgery. You're waking up and you're, you're noticing reconciliation going on, but you aren't, this you is not over it. <laughs> this you is not over it, okay? <laughs> I tell this you, I mean, I'm showing this you everything. And I'm saying, let's work through these emotions. Because it's time to bring that part of your sacral chakra back. It's time to let go of that man because, again, it's not worth it. Did you see how hysterically happy that other you was? You know, already spent the time torturing this man for torturing you. And found out that it's not it's not worth it. So you, this is the same pathway. 
you could take a thousand lifetimes to figure this out or you can just choose to let it go now um, by f making peace with it, okay, inside your heart. She just keeps saying, but he took me out of myself. <laughs> so I got to go find the part you're talking about. I mean, you're literally saying that you had, that yourself was in there, was a, like an actual body, a person that was in there, and he removed that person w from you. So it was like you had a twin self in your, I mean, you're literally showing me the body of what is like a baby even, but it's like a person, and it's you. <clears throat> Is that your actual uterus? Is that what you're talking about? Your uterus was removed? I mean, you're really um, serious about this. And just when I say that, like, it's very exhausting on my heart. It's very exhausting on my, like, temples across my eyebrow. Like, my eyes, I just, I'm very exhausted after I say that. I do believe that's what is being referenced here, okay? You're just so mad. Let me go and see what I can do to bring your uterus back, okay? Because that's literally, I mean, on the energy side of things, we can do anything. We can literally do anything. So yes, I can do that. Let me see what's appropriate here, okay? You, what was taken from you? You weren't, it was literally taken from you. That's how you feel about it. That you didn't offer it, you didn't give it freely, it was literally taken from you. Oh man, you're so mad about this, like you, and I, so you're venting, but you're really like ripping your own face apart. You can't get off the, the ground because you're so covered and your legs and everything are covered in blood. You literally have a missing component from inside yourself. You're exhausted. You're weak. You're screaming. You're, I mean, it's serious. It's really serious here. And no, nothing of these animals is comforting you anymore. In fact, it just feels like it's too hot in here. Too many people in the room. Those, um, there's still more to do there, but <clears throat> this is the next thing, okay? Still figuring this out. Like, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my hand literally into a ga gaping hole. So I'm just placing my hand there. And there's stars. It's like a universe in here. It's a portal. It's like another dimension. And I'm actually going to go now inside and through the portals. That's literally in your reproductive area. And see where it takes me, okay? It doesn't... It's broken. The portal is broken. It doesn't take me anywhere. It's like a broken elevator. This is part of the serious grief. And the wrongness. It's this broken. It's totally a broken elevator. There's something that you know deeply about the female form. And the female reproductive system. And the magic of babies, all right, and, and conceiving and birth, but there's, it's not, it, no doctor, no medical book um, is going to understand this, it's, it's about energy, it's about the way that the world, the earth turns, the way that everything is connected, the flow of pure divine feminine love, um, The importance, it's almost like you're saying every woman has a portal within herself that takes, you know, takes, that's like in the sexual experience, that portal will take, lift the souls into the astral plane. 
and your portal is broken. It's like lifts you to higher dimensions. You're broken, so there's no more higher dimensions for you. Do you see what <laughs> Kundalini, we need to work on this stuff because Kundalini is literally, you're connected to everything now, right? You already are. No matter what is taken from your physical body, no matter what is done, you're always connected to everything. So now the experiences are what create the distortion of our feeling of being in oneness with everything and truly activating that Kundalini energy because now you're free, you're liberated, right? So, you're so mad about this. Because I'm not in the portal anymore, I'm just standing here and you're just so mad about this. So I'm touching your third eye. And I'm, I'm saying it's like, see, but it's like a command. And what I'm saying is you're, nobody can take your ability to be a part of all things because that's your right. You, you're right. Yeah, as a soul. As God, yourself, incarnate. You have a massive something going on in here. It's like you have a mouth of rock that um, wraps around my finger and it, it makes it so I can't pull my finger out of your third eye. And you want to rip my finger off. I'm going to go into your third eye and see what's going on in here. Anger. A lot of anger. I mean, you have this uh, self that works with rocks. But it's like um, moving them with your mind. And then... Like, you could wrap me up in, like, a thousand rocks, um, and I'm kind of swallowed up in the rocks now. Like, I'm swallowed up in earth. But you could suffocate me. You could use these rocks to rip me in pieces. This is all unreconciled anger. This is all because you've been through so much, but you haven't been expressing it through the throat. So that's why it looks just... It's like, it's so mean, it's so nasty, it's, you know, it, but it, it, it has a right to be expressing its anger, okay? We just have to continue to let this anger out and then continue to nurture it without judgment, unconditional love, okay? It does find an end to it, but let's just be patient. I'm just gonna let her, she, she's like this magical person who is working with moving earth energy but it's like putting it wrapping it around me and then ripping me apart with it so i'm just gonna let her do that because this is what she needs to feel better she's pretty pretty nasty about it again with the eyeballs like uh it doesn't hurt me at all. In fact, as she gets her energy out, um, I'm feeling the shifts inside myself. <sighs> and I feel sadness. I feel a lot of sadness. And just a wanting for this agony to go away. You're, you're kind of reaching a part of you that doesn't want to be like this. <sighs> it just... It's just, there's no judgment. There's no balancing scales. There's the, no, somebody needs to, somebody needs to go on trial for this. You know, it's crimes committed kind of thing. Like, there's no justice here. It's justice is the word. So when a human is, goes through these extreme events, there's no justice. It's fine. 
that human can just go live their life in this torture and agony. And, and you're speaking on a soapbox for every single person that's out there. That this has been done to you as well. There's no justice. There is no justice. Do you understand me? There's no justice. You, you're really expressing this. Gosh, you, you, you have so much passion in your heart. You actually be a very influential speaker. Because just you, I'm telling you, I know it may look like a lot of anger, may look kind of disturbing, not really the type of person you are, but we're talking about threads that have been holding on to the pain for a really long time. This is what they're like, okay? But her getting this anger out, her expressing her creative self, wrapping me up in the earth and ripping me apart, her expressing all of this to get it out, her coming into this awareness that it's about justice, justice is not taking place here, people are suffering, um, the human race is in suffering and nobody is on trial for all the hurt and the pain that everybody is going through here and that we're doing to each other. And you're, you're actually, all of this communication is actually creating vibrations that are opening all of your chakras, <laughs> okay? Still a lot of anger behind it, but you're on your feet and you're, you're getting there. You really are getting there, okay? Ah, now I can take that little piece of your sacral chakra. Um, it's like that little piece of heaven and then I go put it back, okay? <laughs> Where it goes. It's like a little puzzle piece and now it fits. Yay, it goes in there. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens. That was me giving you your uterus back. That's, um, that's... That's the shift that takes place inside of her that's also raging in your third eye, okay? As she's also covered in blood in this other space. She says, what if I heal, but the justice isn't done for anybody else? You say, well, you healing is pretty darn important because when you heal, we all heal. So when the human race heals, we all benefit from it. And you healing is going to give you the gifts that you need to help others to heal now too. So you becoming strong is going to help other, other people now find their pathway to becoming strong too. Maybe it's not justice, maybe it's support. Because when you really look at the human race, this person is kind of, you know, been brought up with, with these ideas, been treated in this way, is vulnerable to these things, and happens to be off-putting to these certain types of people. But where these certain types of people, they're the best of friends. So realistically, we're going to somehow step on each other's toes all the time. There are much bigger scenarios that where some it's almost like somebody needs to stand and say, I'm sorry, I did a wrong. And I realize that now and I'm willing to apologize. We don't really see that in our world, you know. You're just talking about it, just talking about these ideas and about human, the human race and human beings, like just even talking about it is actually therapy, is also a therapy. So, you know, even if we don't have the solutions, even if we can't get this justice today, um, they're just talking about it is a therapy as well. And you're calming down in your third eye, this other part is calming down. You have, it's like a beautiful starry night sky that was just returned to your. Um, sacral chakra area. I mean, it's interconnected. It's a lot of layers, so it goes right into the physical, okay? And it's like um, fixing the broken elevator so that you could astral travel, that you can visit the stars. And it's not just through int intimacy either. It's, it's by being, simply by being. Something about you receiving this, you having this return to you, 
is giving you the freedom to fly, the f freedom to literally astral travel. <sighs> Whether you start astral traveling today or you just never astral travel, there's something that is more active when it comes to astral travel ability than it was there before. <laughs> That's what the energy is like. It's showing me the portal is, is mending and has then been mended. And that you are free to travel wherever you want to go. You now can... I mean, there seems to be a little bit more with these barnyard animals. You're standing on your own two feet. That angry version has disappeared from your third eye. Um, this you that was all bloody and everything lying down. She's standing on her two feet. She's wearing a black dress instead of a black sheet shrouding her. She's just simply wearing, it's a very attractive black dress. But she doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to have the shadow side. So she's putting on something like made out of cotton. It's a lot, it's like a summer dress, a very soft and flowy summer dress, but it's like, um, it's a really nice cotton material. It's soft and stretchy. And it's like, it's almost like tie dyed a bit, but it's primarily like white with like blues and pinks and purple, okay? Um, but it's, it's, actually, it's actually really cool. I think I would probably wear that if I had that dress. <laughs> it's like uh, it's so soft and stretchy and it's kind of pretty looking it's like a total like nice sundress you feel like a new person you aren't going to live underground anymore <laughs> You show me how this, we are standing in just a white place and you're going up and out of it, okay? Which is you coming up and out of yourself so that you can be more present in your body and in the world. You love animals and so we're kind of looking at um, that life, but it does not, it is not degrading of you anymore. You don't see it that way. It was just the experience you needed to have, but it gave you um, an even more close -knit, closer relationship with animals and helps you to understand your love for animals and the struggles that you have with being human. And you're not going to judge yourself. You're not going to judge the lifetime. You're not going to judge anything. Like, you literally are able to do this. And you're proud of your lifetimes. You're proud to be who you are. There's something about... I mean, that it, is it a donkey? Is it a horse? Is it both? All I see is a really intensely, like a dark brown horse, very beautiful horse spirit here. And you love this horse spirit. Like, it's one of your best friends, is kind of what it's like. And you hug it, like, you wrap your arms around its neck and you hug it and you cry and tell this horse how much you deeply love this horse. Like, you're thankful that you know each other. And thank you for always being there for me. Thank you for never leaving my side through everything I've been through. It's like this horse spirit has been with you your whole life. It never left. It's really moving. You feel so much stronger now. Wow. <laughs> You feel the exhausted energies have subsided. I mean, it's like you taking yourself back. You're standing your own ground and you're vibing a lot higher and you're, you feel free. Um, you feel like you understand yourself more. You don't feel like you need to judge anything. Um, you're not angry about the doctor. You're not angry about the uterus thing. You feel like you're connected to everything. Um, this horse spirit, you can thank this horse spirit with all your heart and um, you just really just expressing so much love and so much gratitude and so it's unconditional love, no judgment in it at all. And you're really loving yourself, like you're proud of yourself. 
proud to be who you are. And you're grateful. And you feel blessed. <sighs> All right, this is what a liberating session, huh? <laughs> Uh, uh, man, I'm just coming back into myself here. Thank you so, so much for this experience. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me on my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, have a beautiful day, everybody.